as we depart the roundabout, over here to your right is the KC. This was assembled here about five and a half years ago and made in Montreal, Canada. It replicates the first exploration between our Barbadian Tony Mason and Danny Spidiologist Ole Sanderson. So these two cameras, they made it all possible for us to sit back, relax, and enjoy our tour in comfort. And all two cameras, they're still very much alive. Those guys, they're still very much alive. Barbadian Mason, he still lives in the island, and Sanderson can be found in Florida, the US of it. So they're still very much alive. Take out your cameras, put on your flash, Get ready to take lots of photos of your adventure this morning. Please do not stand while the tram is moving or reach out, touch, break, remove any of the calcite formations on the ground. So please control your beautiful hands. For 40 minutes, we will be underground and travel the distance of half mile. Our route takes us down and back along the same way as there is only one way in and out of the game. From time to time, you'll feel drops of water dripping on you. Don't be concerned, but please shelter your cameras from them. Our tour begins as we travel down a man-made tunnel. Constructed in 1978 to allow easy, safe access to the cave. We are traveling through what is called the Boyd's Tunnel, named after equipment operator Noel Boyd, who excavated the tunnel so that trucks can drive through with guests. Join the year, sometimes join the nights, Mr. Boyd's drove and operated a 955k caterpillar which broke through the bedrock and into the natural passageway of the cave. For sure you saw the marks from that caterpillar machine. If you please turn your attention to the ceiling along this area, you'll see some of the marks from that caterpillar machine. And the hardest section of the rock, all of this were blasting. They created the tunnel for us. But please, did you notice what is happening here on the wall? Look at that white substance. You'll see lots more as you travel through. We are at our first point of interest, the Great Hall. This is our first sight and sound of the cave. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and start to take your photos. Use your flash button to capture what you're taking in on the inside of the cave. This is the closest I don't want to get to our ears. It does look like ears. And on the opposite side. You have entered an Asian place. This chamber has been here for tens of thousands of years. Imagine as you sit on this drum that above you there are no people on the island, no homes. No hotels, nothing at all to make you comfortable. Only the rain falling onto the forest, finding its way through the soil that is seeping into the common rock. The Great Hall been through lots of changes over the years, even though the changes are barely visible to your eyes. Ever so slowly, the sword like stalactites above and the rounded stalagmites below are growing due to the constant dripping of water. The drops that you're feeling are called the cave showers, showers of blessings. These droplets, they are important to the growth of the stalactites and stalagmites that you will see on tour this morning. So all the water that you feel and see plays an important role to what happens in the cave on a daily basis. Well, take a peek down, look down, that's where we will be in a few minutes. So we're on the upper level, looking down at the lower level of the Great Hall. As we continue 
were still traveling through an engineered tunnel that was born through solid cobble block. So all of this is still in that main tunnel to accommodate our trams. Coming up to your right is one of many of our open windows. Look here at this one, especially the little pool. The water comes slowly from the ceiling above and it allows you to see into the natural cave. We use these for educational purposes. Our driver is going to stop right. again so you too can see our points of interest. University students that are studying geology, this is one of many windows that they get to call through. A few months ago, we had the University of Columbia down here. You could only imagine how those students felt when they saw that window and found out that they had to crawl through there. All the shock on their faces when they saw that window. So that's what they used for. There are two ways the water gets into the cave, and you have mentioned the dripping one. The other way is from the underground streams. When rain falls directly above us, the water makes its way through the soil. It goes deeper until it meets the rocks. These rocks are the limestone rocks. They have small holes in them that allow the water to seep through. It acts as a filter and then it enters the ceiling of the cave. That's why the water throughout this cave is naturally purified, all because of the limestone that it filters through. Here's the second one and it's open the floor. This is not the area that we get to fall through. As the lights come up, and you look over here to your left, this is one of the streams that in turn Paris escape. You're looking at 365 days a year of flowing water. This is its normal flow rate, and you will see this daily throughout the cave. Now, don't care what is happening on the outside, I'll assure you, you'll see this throughout Harrison's cave on a daily basis. Water is a force to be reckoned with. As it's doing so, it's creating its own pathway between the formations. As it do and flows between the area, the area is called the village. The stalagmites, they look. Oh, no, shut down. The stalagmites, they look like people together in a close knit community, or we all could say groups of loving families. The small ones, they represent the children. So this is our village, our family area. Because look at the closeness especially up here. I hope you have seen some of them have already joined up here. Caves, they are challenging places. Very few places that human beings wish, want, or care to explore. That they not stop worrying Tony Mason or Dennis Sorensen, even though along here is where they had to crawl. So each and every day religiously, they continue through the stream that comes from the Lushman Hall Gully. Both of our streams come from two gullies that are very close to the cave, the Lushman Hall and the Harris Gully. So all along here is where they had to crawl. I know some of you can see yourself exploring just as they did in the 1970s. And through our tears of joy or crying eyes, what did they find at the end of the hallway? What is happening? What they found, we are all about to find out. All along here through the small area. We're about to enter the very same room where they emerged in the 1970s. 
We did some work. We put in the roadway, the lighting system, and of course they had to come up gallons and gallons of water from here. Even though they did that, we're still 80 feet or 26 meters below the surface. Now before they put in the roadway, all of that brush water that came through was from the floor to the same height as the ceiling above. So water helped create what we have just entered. When the tram comes to a complete stop, make sure you use the background over there for your photos. It's lovely over there. It is not as cold as it appears to be. The water is warm, 76 Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius. So the temperature is pretty stable all year round. So that's what we use. That's what we do with the water. So make sure you take your final photos of this area, especially the areas where the cavers had to call when they were exploring. We're making our way back to the village over to the right. Most of the formations in the village area are less than 7,000 years old. Can anyone guess how fast they are going beside very slow? Would you believe that the sun of lights are increasing by less than the thickness of a sheet of paper in chair and that fast in geological terms. One centimeter a year is the same size as the thickness of a sheet of paper each year. The process is slow, but you know that nature is never the one to hurry. It always takes its time. Do you recall that's where we came from? Our next point of interest is the most important area to the entire cave. If our cameras did not pump this, we would not be traveling through on the tram today. I present the original passageway to Harrison's cave. The explorer's passage to the pool is 9 feet or 2 meters at its deepest point. The small passage above the ladder, that's where our cameras had to crawl through when they first entered Harrison's Cave in 1917. The passage does not stop above the ladder. It continues and will take you all the way back to the cave's original entrance. That can be found in our second study, the house study. The passage is one kilometer in length and would only take you four hours traveling through to get out of the cave. It's where our bats and crickets can be found, and you'll find around 4,000 bats through the small passage above the ladder. The bats feed up of flies, mosquitoes, and fruit. Now they make their way on the outside for food, but we have been netted from coming into this area that we're visiting. Before the tour is over, a ton of other gay animals can be found behind this small front cave. Now those great cavers over the years made an important decision many years ago. If to continue or not to continue, in the end, they cross over the forest passage and onto the opposite side. This is where they had to crawl along on their hands, knees, and tummy. Perhaps this of you, can you see yourself ever crawling through an area like this? With a flashlight, knowing that the lights will fail, not knowing where you are going or whether the water will rise and trap you. How about what lies ahead in front of you? That's how they first expressed it. They did a little camping from time to time. It meant nothing. They still had to get them on their knees and crawl through here. They crawl and crawl to our next point of interest. Twin Falls is where the two streams in the cave merge as one. So over there, yes, that's where they make the exit. If you know your textures and stones, and look closely at our two dance. 
and especially this stone above. It's a rare form of limestone, and you're looking at travertine. You will visit other caves, but always remember that travertine is a very rare form of limestone. You do not remove anything from it in the cave. You have to preserve for our generations to come. And did you know that you can get soap and toothpaste from within the walls of this cave? Yes, but you do not remove anything from within the walls. So let me turn your attention to the ceiling. You will see some of the babies. These are the babies in the cave family. They are fragile, similar to that of straws, hollow and new, and called the solder straws. Scientists has estimated it will take 100 years to form an inch of these solar ties. So every 100 years, one inch of our babies will form. They won't stop this size. One day, they will reach the floor level. But first, they will look like the ones that we are about to encounter. Look what the minerals has created over the years. We, if you want lovely photos from where you are sitting, Turn around and use the backdrop up there for your photos. It's lovelier yet when you use that backdrop. And remember that's where we were, some 50 feet above on the upper level. At this point, we're 100 feet or 35 meters below the surface. Other people tried and failed over the years. The residents knew of the existence of Harris's game. Some people even got lost. Our neighbors were the only ones to ever reach this far from here. I'm going to ask you to take a moment and try to imagine some of what they felt when they burst into this room. Now, if they did not do this, the little passage right there is where they had to crawl. So when they burst in here, they crawled up the little passage and continue up here. Tired, wet, and hungry, but look at the determination that they had. So they felt this, but could not see what was happening on the other side. It reminds people of a great cathedral, a huge church. They came down here and continue on the opposite side. From where you are sitting, I'm going to ask you to please turn around and look back and say the same thing. And the answer, of course, is no. As we continue, in case you're wondering about the water, did you notice? And it disappears here on the the whole day. Now, this tree is leading us to 170 feet or 70 meters below the surface. That's our deepest point, but the cave and the water continues on the end of the Dugana Forest. Now this passage is where you will find some of the most unique formations in the entire cave. I am going to say beautiful and unique, that's you, and so is this. It has a soft look to it. This is not as soft as it appears to be. People say hot baths, frozen waterfalls, the cave say ice cream, but it's not soft, it is hard to go. And along the walls of this passage, a white substance is formed called flow stone. The flow stone is being formed when water flows against the rock face and leaves behind tiny deposits of calcium carbonate. So on this wall, you're looking at 25 years of buildup of calcium carbonate and life. That's how old it is estimated to be, 2.5 centimeters thick. I see some of you taking some selfies for your bottle first. If you love to, you can use this background for your selfies. Turn around and look all cute. Snap, snap. Yes, we love the ones. In the ceiling is one of my favorites in the cave. Straight ahead. Most persons say a jellyfish, but I'm thinking claw or jewelry, something soft and elegant. 
just how the water drips up there along the ledge, it leaves tiny deposits of calcium carbonate behind. So once there is dripping water from the end of the stalactite, it will drip and leave behind the corresponding stalagmite. Even though they remove the corresponding stalagmite, a huge one where they were trying to work on the, on the tunnel, please look at the buildup in this area already. Look at the buildup in the area already. Right here. Now you cannot come into the cave and don't get to name one of our points of interest. When you look to your left, what comes to mind? What does it look like? What are your thoughts on this? peaceful and beautiful. For me, it looks like an altar. The one above looks like a brick and a groom in front of the altar, or even gentleman on his knees asking for his lady hands in marriage. Over the years, quite a few guys got them right by this altar and proposed to their ladies. I kid you not. People do get married in Harris's case. Where you got a person that wrote it home, that's where couples say that. The gentleman proposed mm -hmm. right here. They surprise the ladies by the altar and then come back and talk their way. Now there are two other tours that we do beside our signature tour. You can walk through the entire cave. That's another tour that we do. And for the more adventurous ones, we have another tour, it's a wall tour, where you hike, you climb, you crawl, you get wet and muddy, you hike. You get to explore beyond what you are seeing today. For that tour, it lasts for three hours, and that's our Ipa Adventure Tour. Both tours, they're by reservation only. So you get to see beyond what you are seeing when you come back to do that Ipa Adventure Tour. The Mirror Lake, we know you like, that everything that glitters is certainly not gold. This is a perfect example here. It's a lovely lake, but there's some danger to it. It dates back to the show cave in the 1970s. Would you believe if I told you that this is a passage that we should be using this morning? But we could not. Just like the cavers could not use it in the 1970s. I hope you realize that there's no surface streams, no surface water flow this passage. It tells you the water around the lake for 50 feet comes from the ceiling above and saturated with lots of calcite. As a result, as the minerals combine, there are some interesting formations on the water, some of which may be unique to the snow lake. There is the other side. It's a beauty, but there's some danger here. Look at the other side. The mirror lake has four feet of water. Four feet or eight feet of silt, S-I-L-T, at its bottom, which is a form of great sand. So if you go around the mirror lake, no one will see you after doing so. So that's why they could not use it, or we could not use it, because of the silt that you see at the bottom of the lake. They did the work. It took them five and a half years to do all of this with no loss of life within the five and a half years. So that's how long it took. So now you know why they could not use it. I hope you have realized as well some of the challenges that they would have encountered as you travel through on the channel. So as we leave here, we're making our way to the deepest point. First, I'm going to ask you to please turn your attention to the ceiling. I want to share this with you. Let me get the legs first. When you see two of our largest domes, these domes were for tens of thousands, thousands of years ago. The area that stood the rapid time and project and thousands of bats made through here their home many years ago. Now, even though they pump all gallons and gallons of water through here, the caterpillar machine did not came through. What helped create the ants? 
answer is to your left. This tree that is leading us at one point was from the floor to the same height as the ceiling above. It continues, it continues, it does not stop. It is leading us to our deepest point. Everything continues on the end of the pool. The pool is about nine feet, two meters, shaped to look like one of us and features a forty foot waterfall. Now, ladies and gentlemen, feel free to get off and have a closer look at our cascade pool. considered to be a small one and can fit into most countries four times with lots of room leave back. Barbados is limestone. It is made up of 86% limestone. That's the reason for the water and what we are rated. We are the 25th water space country in the world. That's what we are rated as in today. Here's the other side. Now coming up in the ceiling is a beauty straight ahead. Most places say looks like a chandelier with its corresponding star of lines. These two they will grow and grow until they meet each other. That estimation time before the stalactite and the stalagmite meet is 20,000 years now. That's how long it is estimated before the two join together and form more. When the stalactites and stalagmites meet, they are called columns of pillars. When they form more, columns of pillars. Straight ahead is an example of what a column looks like. So you will see several others along the ledge. And you don't have to wait until 20,000 years. No. Perfect example of what a column looks like. So remember the dripping water from the stalactite is important to the role, the forming, the birth of the corresponding stalagmite. To your right, once again, the altar. Most persons believe that the two, the ones above, that they already have joined, the answer is no. One sheet of paper can fit in between the stalactite and the stalagmite. And even though that they are that close, you're looking at 2,000 years between the stalactite and the stalagmite. The remark for t oh, this is significant. It can grow quickly in warm tropical caves. Harrison's cave is a warmer tropical cave. Caves reflect the temperature of where you are in the world with a constant humidity of 96%. 78 Fahrenheit or 26 Celsius. So it's pretty stable all year round. And this is going at a much faster rate when you compare the flow stone to other formations. Did you notice the amount of water from this passage? It's a periodic zone. It basically means that all of that water that came through was from the floor to the same height as the sea above. This is one of our waves on the floor. Take a look. It's a beauty. There are several of them. Now, did you notice any change as you travel through? Even though the passage were completely flooded many years ago, the change is here. Look at the discoloration at the dragons. So the water would have shifted from here. The change out of on the ground. You notice the difference when you look on the floor. So that is what is missing. As we make our way to the lower level of the Great Cathedral, you will be in an excellent position to appreciate the size and the volume of the largest area in the cave. The Great Hall is 100 feet high and measures 160 feet across. I hope you noticed that we did go around in a circle. For persons with camera lights or phone lights, and you spot them a little closer at the formations, you 
you will see some tiny rings from top to bottom on the stalagmites. The rings determines the age of whichever formation that you're looking at. So one ring represents one year of gold. These are some of the things that our students and geologists will look for when they come into Harrison's Cave. So some of the oldest, oldest formations can be found right here in the lower level of our great hall, of our cathedral. Up there, that's where we made our first stop, and soon again, that is where we will be. This one here looks like a jellyfish. Most persons believe, and at the top, there is a column. This is our jellyfish right here. Persons on the opposite side now, make sure you take your final photos of our Twin Falls. And remember the babies, the newest ones, so they're fragile, similar to that of straws, hollow and new. Please make sure you take your final photos. And I hope you have recalled this little passage where our cameras emerge. In every cave, there should be an emergency exit. Let me tell you what you would do to get out of this cave in four hours. Remember that they use this. Now in case there is an emergency, go step one. All of you, this is your boat in the corner. Take the boat to the ladder, climb up, travel through the small passage for four hours, and don't forget, you must travel through the bats and crickets before making your way out of the cave. The bats and the crickets feed off of flies, mosquitoes, and so all they harmless, and can be found at the mouth of the original entrance. We have them netted from coming into this area that we're visiting. Since Harrison's Cave was officially opened to the public, on the November 28, 1981, that's 36 years ago, there has never been any such emergencies, not one in 36 years. This cave is considered to be a huge cave in a small island. Harrison's Cave is our number one tourist attraction the eighth wonder of the world. The Yau Cave is estimated to be half a million years old and that's Yau in geological terms. Remember the shock on our student faces when they saw this window again. You know, the bats, the crayons. It was priceless, trust me. The bats, the crickets, the crayfish, and the worms. All of them can be found in two months of cave that we were unable to travel through. Nothing lives in here, no fish in the water due to the lack of vegetation or no microorganisms for the fish to feed. A fish that lives in those areas would outlive the ones on the outside by 10 times longer. They adapt to the cave's environment they are almost transparent and have snow color and have a very long lifespan. So a crayfish that lives in those areas would outlive the ones on the outside by 10 times longer. The cave is not a private entity. It's owned and operated by the government of this island. Harrison's Cave is named for Thomas Harrison, who once owned much of the land where the original entrance to the cave is located. He was the founder of one of our older secondary schools. In 1733, Harrison College, water is an ever-present force throughout the cave. As we make our way back up the boys' tunnel and near the end of the tour, thank you for choosing us as one of your points of interest. Whatever you do, continue to enjoy your holiday and to enjoy the remainder of the day. Stay blessed and beautiful. It has been my pleasure to join with you. And on your behalf, thank you to Arnold's auto driver for taking us safely on our tour. I am sure it has been his pleasure taking us in and around the cave. Thank you ladies and gentlemen and a sure hope